So you've decided to go with the Zorus 4 pre-release because you too are a stick in the mud and don't like to let anyone have fun. So the Zorus have a new ability called Addendum. This is if you meet the Addendum condition, the spell has an additional or alternative effect. So basically it's like having Kicker, but it matters when you play it. All right, so let's talk about some Addendum cards. First off, Emergency Powers, Mythic. It's the big showstopper here. Not a very good card though. I mean, why do you want to do this? It's seven mana, that's way too much. Yeah, if you play at your opponent's end of turn, you know, you get a whole new hand of cards to play and stuff. But I just, I don't, I see this as like, like a last grasp, really. Like you're like, I'm behind, I need to do something. I got this card. Let's just kind of just restart everything and see if I can get a better hand. And the addendum, you know, you get to play something big if hopefully you get something really good to play. Sync says Insight. Hey, four mana, instant speed to draw cards. I'll take that. The addendum is nice. Not really, you know, a, a bomb or anything. It's just a common. But it's nice to draw two cards and say if you're behind, the extra two life gives you a little, little extra time to cast those cards. Arrestor's Zeal. This is, you know, a really great combat trick. It's cheap. Uh, plus two, plus two is a good bump. And if it's like late in the game, you just need to get some damage in to finish it off. Use this card, get up flying, get over you know, the stall on the board usually. Sentinel's Mark. This is like the only aura, I think, that gives any power and toughness boost. So it's nice for that. Also vigilant, so, you know, when you attack, you can stay back and block. And also with Addendum, you get lifelink, so you maybe put on a bigger creature and gain a bunch of life if you're behind. So it's nice that way, and it's cheap, so I like it. Summary Judgment, hey, you got your white removal here. It's a little conditional, we'll say, because of the tapped, and there's a lot of vengeance going on. But, you know, when you Addendum, you get to do five damage, which is even better. So scales up very nicely. Unbreakable Formation. I like this card. It's three mana though. It's a little expensive, but you know, it can be a nice combat trick and it can also just pump your whole team and freaking attack and still have vigilance. So everything gets us to stay behind and block. Really nice card. I don't know if you really need to go wide with it, but definitely better with the more creatures you have. Arrestor's Almination. Um, it's a fine card. It's semi removal, we'll say, because it's just balancing it. So, you know, taking a turn off really. And, you know, the addendum of drawing a card is always good. I like that. It's just three mana is a lot for this effect, but still gonna play it no matter what if I'm in blue. Code of Constraint. I never really like these cards that just, you know, give a minus to the power because it's like saving you maybe an extra turn if they're only attacking with one creature. Maybe it helps you like win a combat. I don't know. It's just, it's it seems like it's so little, but drawing a card is always nice. And the fact of the addendum just, you know, tapping something down, keep it tapped down, love that. So not a bad card, I have to say. Also would play in any blue, probably over the uh, resters. And lastly, Precognitive Perception. So five mana, instant speed to draw three cards. Sure, I'll play that. And then the addendum of scrying three is nice. So say the end of their turn, you play this, just draw three cards. And then if you really need to search for an answer or a card, you know, anything you need, you can play on your main phase, scry three, make sure you're getting closer to it. So really works if you're you know on par or behind. So I like that. All right, now let's talk about some good Azorus creatures. Deputy of Detention, holy crap. Detention Sphere on a stick, I love this card. This card is so good. It's only three mana. It's a one three, so it blocks pretty well. And then it just, you know, takes out every token they have if they're playing Afterlife or something. You just put on one of their tokens, it takes out all of them. Such a good card. and. You know, kind of has some blink effects if, you know, you do get a token, maybe you can blink this and get something else because those tokens are gone. Azorius Knight Arbiter. This card's weird, but I like it. Five mana, a little expensive, but it's a 2-5, so it blocks for days. And it has Vigilance, so it's definitely going to block. And then it's unblockable, so you can attack just, you know, as much as you want, you know, willy-nilly. And it's hanging back on a block. It's only two, dealing two damage, which, you know, isn't that much, but... Getting two every turn, that's fine. I'll take it. Azorius Skyguard. Oh, this card. I love this card. Six mana for a 3-3. Three, three. Flying. Eh, it's okay. First strike, okay. Much better. And then creatures your opponent's control get minus one minus. Oh, that I love. That wrecks combat. That's so annoying. Any aggro deck would hate playing against this card. Yeah, it's six mana, so going against aggro deck, probably going to be hard to get them out, but still, 
Minus one, minus zero, so good. Sphinx of the new Parov, we'll say? That mana cost always hurts. Better have a really good effect. 4-3 Flying Vigilance. Not bad. I like that. 4-3 uh, kind of sucks with Vigilance because that's going to die to a lot of things if you you know hang it back to a block. But has a nice little uh, clause there for if anyone tries to target it with a kill spell or something. It costs two more. So if you can get this down, like, say, turn four or five, and they only have slow removal, like five cost, holy crap, that's seven mana if to pay just to kill this thing. Really good. I could see this getting in some pretty good swings. Synec Guild Mage, I love this card. This card's so good. This is exactly what this deck wants to do. It's, of course, a two mana 2-2, two -two, but, you know, pay one white, tap it, gain two life. So, you know, keeps you in the game longer. And then pay one blue and tap it, d draw a card, then discard a card. That's amazing. You're just searching for answers, searching for anything just to make the game grind down till like it gets to where you need it to. Such a good card. And it's so cheap. Sydney Griffin. This card's fine. Four mana for a 3-2 flyer. I'll play that. And it's hybrid mana, so it you know, makes it easier to cast. And then you get to scry one when it comes to play. I could see running a couple of these uh, just... You know, attacking the air is always great and sealed, and the trying one is nice. Syndicate Messenger, four mana for a two-three flyer, so you know the opposite there, but has afterlife one, so can block pretty well. Can block all those tokens for days, and if it ever dies, you just get another token with flying. Yeah, definitely gonna play that. Ministrant of Obligation, this card's great. Uh, it doesn't look that great because it's three mana for a two-one, but that afterlife two is so good. So basically, you play this. You'll probably trade with something, take out something that has two toughness, and then you get two one-one flyers. That's amazing and sealed. I love that. Lumbering Battlement. Okay, so five mana, four, four, five with Vigilance. That's fine. You know, you might play that, you might not. But the fact that you can just make this guy huge, uh, he's just going to keep attacking and blocking and just killing like their things little by little. Such a good card. If you can give up flying or anything like that. Oh, it's so annoying. And the fact that like you could do some battle near the battlefield shenanigans where when this guy dies, all your stuff comes back. That could be great too. Hero of Princeton 1. I like this card, but I like it more in Orzov. But here it's still fine because it's a 2-mana two 2-2 two -two that just makes creatures every time you play a gold spell. I mean, you're going to be playing a lot of gold spells in this set because they're really good. And there's a lot of them. So you can definitely see playing this. But I think Orzov is where you really want it. Angel of Grace. Could this have more abilities? Holy crap, this card is amazing. 5-mana four, 5 4 flying with flash. Hell yeah, I'm going to play that. You, As long as it's on the battlefield, you pretty much can't die because you're always at one. And then you just gain 10 life if it ever dies by just exiling it. So good. This card is so good. Oh, man. That, any white deck wants that. Civic Stalwart. He's a fine guy. He's a hill giant that pumps your team for a turn. Uh, like I said, I think Orzob wants this more, but Azorius is still going to you know play this. If you can give all your freaking flyers plus one, plus one. Yeah, I'll take it. Forbidding Spirit, this guy's fine. Three man for a three three. I like that, and he has an upside of you know pretty much taking an attack turn off from your opponent because they would have to pay a ton of mana for it. So yeah, I mean it's not too exciting, but three man for a three three, gonna play that no matter what. Spirit of the Spires, I love this card. Uh, four mana for a two four flyer, and uh, all your flyers get plus o oh, plus one. So. All your flyers get a little extra bump in the butt, and if they're tokens, they're one twos now, which is nice. They won't trade with you know stupid one ones and stuff. Tithe Taker, this guy's fine. Uh, I think mainly you want it for the afterlife, but you know sometimes the ability of making everything of your opponents you know one more can get them if they like have a kill spell and they just don't have enough mana or something. So he's a fine little guy, and you know a two one for two. Sphinx of Foresight, holy crap, this card is amazing. Four mana, four four flying, hell yeah. You have to scry during your upkeep every turn. And then you get a little, like, a, a little cute thing of uh, if it's in your opening hand. Which, hey, I'd be fine with this in my opening hand no matter what, because it's cheap. But the fact that it gives me a little, like, a uh, scry three, I'll take that. Chillbringer, a little expensive at five, but, you know, it's flying. Always going to play that. And taps in on a creature. Heck yeah. I mean, you know, for a whole turn, I'll take that too. Mesmerizing behind. I like this card. Uh, it's just nice that it comes down with three creatures. So if you're behind, you get blockers and it gives you two little blockers that are really good because it keeps things tapped down. Yeah, they'll probably die, but the fact they keep them tapped down, awesome. And if you have like, you know, blink shenanigans with this, can get out of control. Just I'll attack with everything and keep like my, my four O2s behind. 
Windstorm Drake, five mana for a three three flyer. That's not great, but like that Spires, it gives all your creatures a bump and this one's in power. And if you already have a ton of flyers, which you probably will, because I'm guessing there's a blue white flyers deck, this is makes them even better. Pateramander, I love this little guy. One mana for one flyer isn't great, but the fact you can just dump a bunch of mana and make him a five five flyer later in the game, that's awesome. And you know, it might not even be a ton of mana if you're playing a bunch of instants of sorceries. Skitter Eel, this one's fine. It's, you know, a hill giant that can get bigger. I'll play that, nothing wrong with that. Uh, late in the game, make it a five five. It's gonna block a ton of things, attack. Skate Wing Spy, once again, this is like way better in Simic, but four mana for two three that you can make a flyer and bigger later on. I'll play that, that's fine. And if ever have any like stray one one counters or a creature, all of a sudden, hey, they are flying. All right, now let's talk about the removal. Law Mage's Binding. Holy crap, this card's awesome. Three mana for basically an arrest, but it has flash. Like, that's so good. Arrest was like already an amazing card. The fact that it has flash, oh, love it. Slime Bind. This is like your usual blue removal. Gives a creature negative power. So it just, it can like still block and it can still attack if like, you know, it was a 5 5 or something. But it just kind of turns off the card a lot. And it's cheap. It has flash, so it's nice. It's not the most exciting removal, though. Swirling Torrent, a lot of mana, but awesome effect of just bouncing two creatures and making them blank a turn by drawing the creature you just bounced. Love that. Wasn't much for removal there in Azorius, but let's check out their spells. First off, Absorb. You got here a hard counter, which is awesome, and you gain a little life, but white, blue, blue, ouch, that hurts. Uh, still gonna play this, though, because it's just a hard counter and sealed, and that's always great. I don't feel like white, blue, blue is gonna be that hard as like say white, white, blue, blue would be. So yeah, definitely gonna play that. Talking of hard counters, Thought Collapse. It's basically a cancel, but the upside of milling three, which isn't too much of an upside, but still it's a hard counter and still, I'll take it. Dovin Grand Arbiter, holy crap, this card is amazing. He's a cheap planeswalker. He makes blockers, he gains you some life. Love that. If you already have creatures out and plus one him, you just get more loyalty counters, so he just kind of protects himself that way too, because he's just making his loyalty count higher. And his ultimate is just, you know, draw, like look at a bunch of cards and draw whatever you want. Uh, yeah, great card for limited. Lots of abilities that aren't the same thing over and over, and they all help you in limited, so love it. Depose, deploy. I could almost put this removal because this card is crazy go with that deploy. Depose, you know, let's say it's half removal because you're tapping a creature, drawing a card. Basically, you know, if you want to get through for some damage or something, you do that. Or if, you know, sadly, they're going to attack with something that's going to kill you, you tap it down before. Or if you just want to cycle the card away and hope to get like a land or something or something you need. But the deploy, four mana at instant speed, create two 1-1 one -one Thopter tokens. That's awesome. You can put those down, block with them, you know, maybe kill something, maybe just chump block. And then you get to gain life from any creatures you control. So you're gaining two right there and then whatever more creatures you have. So it's helping out a lot there. I love the deploy part of this. Next, we have Warrant Warden. Uh, yeah, I mean, almost removal again. Warrant right there. You're bouncing something on top of their library. I love that. It's the Warren part that's awesome. Not instant speed, sadly, but five mana for a 4-4 four -four Sphinx with Flying and Vigilance. That's so good. Like, heck yeah, I will take that any day. Prying Eyes. Um, This card... It's a lot of mana, I have to say, but you do get to draw four cards. You have to discard two, but I mean, if you get to look at four cards, it's gonna be easy to get rid of two of them. And it's in speed, so that's nice. I would probably just play one of this in sealed, uh, but only in sealed, because, you know, games go long and you gotta search for answers sometimes. Essence Capture, better than Simic deck, but still fine here. It's a hard counter, pumps one of your guys. It's double blue, which, you know, it's gonna be hard to cast, but late game, it's gonna be easier and you just, you know, hard counter their bomb or something. Verity Circle, this one I was very iffy about, and I think I still am, but Azorius is such a slow, grindy deck. This is exactly the type of card it wants. It's just going to like tap down their blockers so you can get through, or tap down their attackers so they can't deal damage to you, and you're gonna draw cards no matter what. I mean, end of turn, tap down one of their creatures. Your turn, tap down another one, you draw two cards. You just like got rid of two of their blockers and use attack and maybe kill them. Who knows? Super, super slow, but I think it's exactly what Zorius wants to do. And lastly, Dovin's Acuity. This card, I like it. I don't love it. It's not as good as, what was the other one? Disinformation campaign or whatever. 
This one gains you life, which is nice and exactly what Azorius wants to do. And you get to draw a card, which is always fine. It just depends on how many instants you have and if you want to cast them during your main phase. If you only get to play this once, that's fine, but a little disappointing. Get this twice off and then you're like, okay, I feel much better about it. All right, now let's talk about some cyborg cards. Archway Angel. This one doesn't need that many gates to be good. In fact, I think six mana for a three, four flyer might be good enough for sealed. Depends on your deck, of course, how like grindy it is. But if this comes down and you gain just like even two life, that's not bad. Four life, even better. I could see that happening quite often. Bring to trial, bring to trial. This could almost be a main deck spell, except I just don't like that it's three mana and sorcery speed. And it's just, you know, Four power, that's, you're gonna be waiting a long time, I feel like, just to get that going off. I mean, it gets maybe Simic or Gruul. It'll have a easier chance, but that's why I'd rather just sideboard it. Exposed to Daylight, eh, I don't see this even doing much. I mean, are there that many artifacts or enchantments that you really have to sideboard for? Maybe like one or two, but other than that, it's three mana, it's so expensive. And the upside is you get to scry one. Like, all okay, right, no thanks. Sky Tether, this is also almost main deckable, especially with Azorius, because you have a bunch of flyers and you want to make sure you get rid of their flyers. But uh, I just hate having this in my hand if you know they're Rakdos or something and they have no flyers at all. But then again, it is only one mana, so it's not that bad. I could see main boarding this. And last, Gateway Sneak. Three mana for one three, that when it hits an opponent, you get to draw a card. That's not bad, uh, but what it really shines is if you have gates and they have to come into play while he's already out. So this is definitely a cyborg card if you have like a bunch of gates and definitely a draft around, which that's gonna be cool. Now let's talk about some bad cards. High alert. Oh, this was going on. This has been in drafts a few times with like, was it defense formation? And it just, it never really works. You have to have this card just to make that deck work because you're picking a bunch of things that have high toughness or defender. And if you don't get this card, they do nothing. It just, and on top of target creature, I guess, cause you can block with it really well. I'm not a fan of this card, especially in sealed. Smothering Tithe, ugh, what is going on with this? Way too expensive at four mana. Then the ability of someone has to pay two and you get a treasure, that's not even close to as good as like drawing a card or something. So yeah, they're probably never gonna draw the two and giving you extra mana isn't great, so. Not a fan of this card. Clear the mind, clear this out of your deck. Am I right? This card doesn't do anything. It's three mana to draw a card and maybe help yourself against the mill deck, which don't worry, you're fine. Mass manipulation, like I said, a Simic. Don't like this card. It's it's not that it costs too much, it's that it costs too much blue. Like there was the one from Dominaria where you got to steal a permanent and it becomes legendary. I would play that card, that's fine. It was six mana, but it was only double blue. This is four, that's gonna be so hard to cast. Yeah, it has the you know upside if you do eight, you get two things, but a lot of times it's gonna be six, you're gonna take like a three three or something and it's not gonna be worth it. Especially in Azorius. Like the mana fixing is probably not there. It was better in Simic and even then I didn't like it. Persistent petitioners? No, don't, don't, don't do it. I mean, maybe if you wanna try and draft it to have fun, go ahead, but this is not gonna happen. It's milling, who cares? It's, it's janky and cute, but no thank you. Especially in Sealed. All right, there we go for Azorius. This is one grindy guild, I have to say. This is ex exactly what it wants to do. It wants to just grind things out, counter things, bounce things, have its flyers hit you in the air. Oh my God, it's like the slowest deck. Uh, I almost want to play it just with the flyers, but I don't want the games to go on forever, which they will. <laughs> Some of the pros, flyers, flyers, flyers. It's no secret, flyers win you games in Sealed. This has a ton of good ones. Control seems very plausible in this deck. Like, it seems like it's going hard control with all the counters and stuff, bouncing things. If you're into that, which I am not, go right ahead. It looks like it's there for you. Sealed games go long and it's exactly what this deck wants to do. So it's totally set up for it. Some of its cons, the removal, once again, like some of the other colors, just not there. It has that great enchantment and I love that but a lot of it is just bouncing things. It doesn't even have a white like O-ring or anything. It's gonna be harder to really take care of threats, I feel like, you're just gonna be bouncing them a lot. It doesn't do well against aggro go wide or anything like that because it has a lot of like big one blockers. There's not a way to just make tokens to block things too much. So might have a hard time against a really good uh, Rakdos deck. The addendum ability, 
doesn't seem that great, I have to say. It doesn't really work with any of the other guilds. It's kind of off on its own, and it's like an okay upside on most of them. So not really feeling the ability there. All right, and this is sealed, so we're gonna go three colors probably. And even though I wanna say Simic, I think Orzov is the guild you'll want to splash for just because of the tokens and the flying and stuff. So first off, we got Seraph of the Scales. I mean, this card is just amazing no matter what. If you get it, you're gonna have to splash for it in Orzov. It's flying, gives Vigilance, Death Touch, and the Afterlife of two, holy crap. If it dies, then who cares because you're still getting two one ones. Gasping Thrall. Another flyer, that's awesome. It's a four point life swing just coming into play. If you have some bouncing shenanigans, that's awesome. Sending a guild mage, not the best guild mage we'll say, but does have the ability of dealing two damage. So if you're just making a wall and the games are going late, you can just keep getting your opponent for two every turn and maybe eventually win the game. Spawn of Mayhem, okay, maybe a little hard to splash with double black, but the card's amazing. And if you get it, I would say try hard to splash for it because holy crap, is that a beater in the air? Azorius is lacking removal, and Orzov has plenty of it with Mortify. Just three mana to destroy target creature enchantment. Probably gonna be a creature most of the times. Final Payment, only two mana to destroy a creature. Sure, you have to, you know, lose five life or sack a creature, but you're going Orzov, so maybe you have an afterlife, maybe you have a token to sacrifice. And Azorius has a lot of life gain, so maybe you're just, you know, gain a ton of life, so you can do that five, doesn't matter. And then Ethereal Absolution, just pumps your whole team, makes theirs smaller, and you're getting tokens for four mana. Awesome card, great for going late, because you can just you know make a whole army of tokens that are two twos now. All right, that is it for Azorius. Stay tuned for the rest of the guilds. This program brought to you by viewers like you.